what's up everyone, Lethal Concept here, and I'm here to talk about the multiplayer patch 1.08 patch notes that was just recently released. So instead of just having like a static background on um, the patch notes, I actually decided to head into a game. So here I'm just going to play with the Solarian Infiltrator on gold. I'm pretty sure I'm on gold. Yes. So I'll just be playing this with my Solarian Infiltrator in the background and then obviously talking about the patch notes as well. Now, the first couple of changes were made to melee it seems. It seems they increased damage all across the board for all the um, melee hits. It should be all the melee hits. Everything got buffed. Up, Asari's sword got a large buff of 340 damage. Everything else got well. First of all, Omni Blade got a damage increase of 125. Cry Gauntlet got a damage increase of 200. Sorry, Sentinel. Sorry, sword. Sorry, got a damage increase of 340. That's the large one. Krogan Hammer got a damage increase of 250 and a radius increase of 2 meters. Krogan Headbutt got a large damage increase of what's that, three, 410. Sorry, it's hard to read and play at the same time, but will this, I mean, so with the changes of having melee staggerable, it's you, you can't just spam melee and expect to be like free easy win or free kills or free easy playstyle is what I should say. What this means is that melee might be more tailored towards a kind of there's a lot of in melee builds there's a lot of like combo and what I mean is you do melee and then you use a weapon and then you use melee and you get a damage increase on both your weapon and your melee. So what I'm thinking is this creates a, like a one two combo builds a lot more viable because this means that you can use a very high powered weapon like a Yushio or a Dan or a Ruzan and then you punch them and with a new damage increase they should be able to just two shot moist mobs just fairly easily. Um, I don't know if it will two shot if you use something as weak as the scatter, scatter shot shotgun, but scatter would be very great because you don't actually have to reload or like refill your ammo with scatter. Let me just check, okay. It's not highlighting, so I'm pretty sure they can't hear me. But yes, that does seem to be the case. I, if it, if it can actually, well, if, uh, even if it's just two shots with the, uh, even if it's just, ooh, I die. But even if it's just two shots with the scatter or three shots with the scatter, before you can actually finish them off with them, I think still scatters a very good weapon if you're not using. A very high powered single shot weapon and comboing it with a 1 2 melee combo kind of thing. Um, the melee, when I use vanguards and stuff like that, I don't actually use like just spam melee. I actually use it more strategically. So, would this change anything for me? Mm, it will just mean that I'll be able to melee when the enemy is at a. Uh, kind of higher low, low health than normal. I don't, I'm not sure if the Krogan Hammer actually changes much. Unless you, unless you take a Radius Pull. If you take Radius Pull, I'm thinking that this is more suited for something like that. Krogan Headbutt damage is large. What I want to test out, which is what I am going to right down when I'm done with this game is I want to know if a charge into headbutt can just one shot or like one combo enemies. That that will be something that I really want to see. Omni Blade is just a basic melee. I'm guessing ground pound have their melee increased. I'm hoping. A oh, sorry sword got a large damage increase so that will fit more with her charge and melee playstyle. 
Now for powers, we have <clears throat> Offensive Tech Rank 6 Tactical Synergy Upgrade will now trigger for all three powers. Solarian Infiltrator, so that's Sticker Grenade, Energy Drain, and Pack Cloak. Um, I'm not sure, I can't really remember what Tactical Synergy was, but because it triggers for Tactical Cloak, I'm guessing it's a damage increase when using your power, if I remember there was something like that. So that makes Solarian Infiltrator a bit more... a bit more of a varied playstyle, because... The reason you pick a human infiltrator over a sorry while I burp um, over the Solarian infiltrator is because the human infiltrator has a lot more health and shields with the health and shield passive upgrades. But with this new passive, hopefully this will mean that the Solarian infiltrator is a stronger and more viable second pick or like viable infiltrator pick. Energy drain. Decrease rank 6 shields restored from 30% to 25%. I don't think ultimately in the grand scheme of things this will change much. Excuse me while I kill this person. I'll the raider first. I don't think in the grand scheme that changes much. It's not a huge portion. You're still getting a quarter instead of roughly a third. Crybeam now grants 25% assist score instead of support score. That I don't really care about. Shockwave has almost 100, 100 damage increase. That could actually be... That could actually be useful. Because if you've actually seen one of my biotic adept gameplay, that a single singularity shockwave combo does not actually kill any standard sized unshielded red health mooks. So what I actually want to see is does this mean that this new damage increase with the shockwave means that they can actually that singular 18 shockwave will actually kill those standard size unshielded unarmored mooks and means that you don't actually have to detonate this singularity so you can just have it there to CC any other un red health mooks that come in. Because what I find that is that the only combo that will actually kill um, these red health enemies in one go is Singularity, Shockwave, and then Detonating Shockwave. But with this new damage increase, it might mean that you can actually just use that combo and keep Singularity up as a area denial or CC. Overload, increase the... Just a second. Increase the chain damage when fully charged from 100 to 30. 300, sorry. Not 100 to 30, 100 to 300. So it's three times the damage increase. Rank 6 maximum charge now grants 30% to all overload damage and not just chain damage. So it means, I'm guessing this means the initial hit has the 30% damage bonus increase and not just the chain hits. Hmm. So what I want to test out is does this mean that taking the jump jump overload upgrades instead of the damage overload upgrades will mean that you can just you can still strip all the shields of a target of a fully shielded enemy or do you still have to take at least one shield damage or damage increase before you can actually do that so that's something that I want to test out for overload maximum charge that just means you have a more stronger initial damage increase so it's not as, well, it's impactful, but it's the, the impact is pr fairly fairly easy to judge. Uh, just excuse me while I run all these through all these mobs. Uh, oh, I can hold this and breathe. Damage from frag grenades, sticky grenades, and trip mines now bypass enemy shield grades. Oh, that's really good. What, what this means is that the shield gate mechanic is that when an enemy is on a tiny bit of shield, any large damage hit will not kill them. Like Even if it's like a million damage, because they have that tiny little bit of shield, that shield will absorb all damage for one single hit. 
so this means that if an enemy has low health and low shields and you throw a frag grenade this means that you can actually kill them with that frag grenade can you stop moving thank you so that's pretty nice that's that's a nice <laughs> as a jump off the map that's a nice change it's actually pretty it's actually quite game changing if I should if I say so myself this means that you can actually kill well, you can't. You don't have to waste two grenades to actually just bypass a shield gate. Cause if you take anti armor on some of the grenade upgrades, this means that you have to use at least two grenades to bypass a shield gate. Uh, combos increase tech damage combos from 225 to 257 on bronze. 350 to so 50 damage increase on silver and. That 62 damage increase on gold. Um, doesn't seem very that doesn't seem that large. If I do say so myself. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a couple of equations to see if if that damage increase is noticeable with stuff like combo or detonation damage increase bonuses uh, let's see throw does now does standard combo damage instead of previous was negative 25% so this just means that you have an extra 25% damage on throw combos I'm guessing is what it means that's nice that's pretty cool I just want to concentrate on staying alive for this extraction here. Um, yes. Weapons, accuracy improved for automatic weapons. Oh, that's... Does that mean that there will be more viable assault weapons? So I'm going to have to test those out for patch 1.08. Reduced maximum size and speed of reticle bloom for automatic weapons. Since it says automatic, I'm assuming it's all automatic weapons. Um, that means that Revenant might actually be viable outside turbocharged builds because viable. I mean, the Revenant was mostly viable with a turbocharged class, but now with this accuracy bonus, it will be interesting to see if the Revenant actually gets up to the level sweeper changes made may 19 in service side update uh, not actually sure what that means but I'm guessing these are secret changes that they just actually released the patch notes for Anyways, sweeper increased damage from 64 from to 77 to 96 to 115. Reduced recoil, change hit reaction to a short interrupt. So I'm guessing this staggers. I'll have to test that out. Cyclone has a bit of a damage increase. I'll need to test that out. Don't have the Avengers or well, the S weapons for the uh, new quote-unquote basic upgrade weapons yet but it seems that all got a damage increase across the board Talon <laughs> Talon got a damage increase really force decreased and weight increased well you don't you didn't really use Talon for the force you use Talon because it has a really high damage and it acts as a shotgun with a pistol extra two weight is still negligible it's still going to be the uh, lightest and one of the strongest shotguns you have. Again, talks about Charger S having damage increase. Vanquisher weight decrease, I mean increased. Um, not really going to change your might if you're going to roll a Vanquisher main class. Widow weight decreased. Indra removed large camera shake on the Indra's first shot. The reason I don't use Indra isn't because of the camera shake. It's because it leaves particles on the screen for your ally players. 
and also because I feel with accuracy bonuses, Raptor is just a superior choice anyways. Incisor has reduced Incisor's recoil per shot. Wait, was it the Injure or the Incisor that lit the particles? It was one of those two. I'll have to see. Pretty sure it's the Injure though. Viper S damage increased, yep. Yeah. Actually, that's a large damage increase, 610 to 730, that's about Vanquisher damage, isn't it, with the Vanquisher nerf. Anyways, enemies, Fiends, Hydra, Adai, and Ascendants now wait at least 2 seconds to initiate a sync attack after jumping from a lower level. <laughs> that's a good change, I like that change. Enemies do 5 and 10% more damage with all attacks, 5 for... Bronze, silver has 10, and gold has 10. Hmm. I actually feel... I have a mixed re reactions to this, or mixed feelings. And the reason I say that is because... Stuff like Raiders... They do a lot of damage for their kind of... T enemy tier. Like, they're the most basic... Enemy. And just a couple of bullets will just strip all your shields and leave you... Running for cover. Whereas something like um, a, let's see, an agent, which is what I would consider an upper class, because it's armoured, it takes more damage, doesn't deal as much damage as a radar. And the 10% more damage is good for the agent, but for things like the very basic enemies, like raiders, if you just have two on you, you're pretty much... And the, and they got an angle to fire at you, you will have to hug cover, where I feel like they shouldn't pose that much of a threat, where just a couple of bullets will just drop you down to red health. So, we'll see. Decrease enemy shield gate duration from 0.25 seconds to 0.1. I am guess, okay, that's not bad. That's okay, actually. It just means that if, if you do two large amounts of damage in 0.25 seconds, you don't drop the enemy out of the shield gate. If you do them, them over 0.1 to 0.2 now, it means you can actually get through the shield gate, is what I'm guessing. Multiplayer, increase shield enemy guild shape, sh sorry. Increase enemy shield gate amount on bronze, gold, and silver from 330, 240, 950 to 495, 1152, and 1995. Okay. I'm not sure if this will have a... This obviously will have a significant impact, but... Does this mean that all enemies on each, le each difficulty will have increased shields for this increased shield gain amount? I'm not sure. Multiplayer enemies in cover take less time to attack targets that are in the open. Huh. Well. That just means this really has become a cover to based cover shooter even more so now. Increase the distance enemies are willing to travel to execute a down player from 9 meters to 12 meters. That's, that's fine. Well. I'm not sure on extra uh, roughly a third. Mm, that's that's still okay. It doesn't really change that much. Reduce distance from which down player can be executed. Okay, that's a, that's better. That that kind of alleviates that. That makes them have to go closer. Slow the wind up time for fiend and ascending sync attack. Well, ascendance one is pretty easy to dodge. Fiends though, I haven't been hit by them. Fiend Magnet Hands kind of attack yet, or the Sync Teleport Magnet Hands attack yet. But if it's gone, then this change is not necessary. I feel like as a player, you still wouldn't want to be close to the Fiend or the Ascendant. And a lot of players, everyone pretty much guaranteed just not go near them anyways. The only problem is if a fiend was able to still do the teleport sync kill, then wind up wouldn't really wouldn't really matter as much, because they wind up from like five me like ten meters away from me and they still grab you. I don't. Well, I'm not sure if winding up 
had song the why not will actually change that but I don't think it will because it's still like a latency issue but I haven't seen any latency thing bullshit kills sync kills yet so I'm not sure this why not actually it doesn't make the enemy enemy as threatening what I would change for the ascendant is that Either make the orb when it goes through cover and hits you, either take away your shields or stagger you, but not have them both. I just feel having them both is a bit too much. Now for remnant assembler weapon damage increase by 10%. Wait, this means that assembler has an overall 20% damage increase on gold and silver and 15% on bronze from the extra changes above. Okay, and change assembler firing pattern from 4 to 8 shots per salvo to 4 to 9. Huh. Damage spike at the end of destroy damage field now ignores plays health gate. Uh oh. Yeah, okay, I see. What... So destroyers can actually down you with their shot if you are low on health. Ah. Well, that's going to be fun to go up against. Observers now have a short charge up if we're attacking. The problem with this is, can you actually see the charge up? Because, I mean, it, it just felt... Like, I don't think there's much animation a Remnant Observer can actually do to show it's charging up. Unless it's, like, shaking really visibly. or Like, if it's just if it just opens its eye, then you're going to assume it's attacking anyways. Outlaws converted the prize armor bar evenly into health and shield. Um, prize the Asarian one with the biotic shield that reflex. I don't think I don't think this change is that good for the prior, and the reason I say that is so because the prior reflex damage. So things like um, how would I say this? Things like Sticky grenades and concussive shot can like bounce off of it, but things that actually hit through that sh that uh bionic uh, backlash shield is like things like incinerate and energy drain, and with energy drain it just means it's easy to kill. With incinerate now you can't actually stagger the prior because there's not armor anymore and shields. And shielded enemies don't stagger from fire CC effects unless they go down to red health. So this just means they're easier to take out with overload. Incinerate doesn't CC them through the shield anymore. It just means that you ha have to deal with prize differently if you're running an incinerate build. Hydro sync attack wind up is 20% faster and kills the target if successful. 